Welcome everyone. My name is Jacqueline Mack. I am the creator strategist and creative director of the Mississauga Arts Council. And this is Susan Dernan. She's the administration lead of the Mississauga Arts Council. We would like to thank you for attending tonight's TD Cultural Lab webinar, Brand Building Tips for Creators and Entrepreneurs with Daniel Recavilla, presented by Mississauga Arts Council. TD Cultural Lab is generously sponsored by TD Bank Group. The Mississauga Arts Council is dedicated to enabling the growth of the arts by creating opportunity and connection between artists and residents in Mississauga and beyond. Celebrating our milestone 40th anniversary this year, the Mississauga Arts Council is a registered charity dedicated to accelerating progress toward the attainment of our vision of Mississauga as a vibrant cultural community where arts and culture thrive. Our mission is to empower the arts economy by creating more opportunities and capacity, connecting artists to audiences and each other, and celebrating artists' achievements. We would like to acknowledge th that the land on which we gather is part of the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, Ojibwe-Chippewa, Métis, and most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, who are direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the Credit. A couple of quick reminders. Please turn your video off. Please keep your microphone muted. If you wish to make a comment, or if you have a question, please use the comment section below. We will be moderating the question and answer portion of tonight's webinar and ask that you use the chat feature to ask your questions throughout the presentation. If you wish to change the view you are seeing, there is a button to the top right-hand corner with viewing options. All right, let's get started. We are absolutely thrilled to present tonight's webinar, Brand Building Tips for Creatives and Entrepreneurs, and it is my pleasure to introduce Daniel. Daniel is a creative strategist and mentor making a positive impact. As the founder of Now Creative Group, Daniel leads a team of creatives and strategists to provide branding and marketing services to startups, nonprofits, and big brands. Daniel is passionate about helping others to create social change and founded nonprofit organization Access in 2006, through which he supports the youth who are building their own initiatives for social good. Daniel received both a 40 under 40 award and a business excellence award in 2018. All right, take it away, Daniel. All right, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining tonight. Um, it's my first time presenting with uh, Mississauga Arts Council and I'm, I'm pretty excited. Um, I will start off, if you can see my screen um, sharing as well, I'll start off just by giving you a little bit more of a background. Uh, and Thank you for that intro. So um, as mentioned, uh, I am the founder of an agency called Now Creative Group. Uh, over the years, I, I did start off as a, as a freelance designer, uh, graphic designer. I'm from Brampton went to OCAD University, um, got a degree in graphic design. And uh, over the last seven years or so of this agency, um, I served mostly as creative director, but of course in a small agency, you're doing a lot more than just uh, one role. So um, I've transitioned though uh, over this past uh, few months actually to just a founder role where I'm not the, uh, I'm not like a day-to-day -day creative director and I have some other roles doing strategy. Uh, and then, as mentioned, I also started a nonprofit in uh, the Peel region, which uh, has been a really uh, awesome way to meet and connect with so many great people in, you know, across Brampton, Mississauga, and beyond, uh, doing really great things. So, uh, I wanted to start off. Of course, today's uh, is going to talk a ton about um, personal branding not just for, um, you know, from a business perspective, but also uh, your own personal brand. What, that, what does that actually mean for uh, artists and for creatives? This is my personal website, that's why it's up here. Um, although I do have, um, although you saw that I have a company and a nonprofit, um, I also maintain this personal brand website. And I think it's really important um, that we all have kind of a central hub for our all, everything that we do. Uh, this is just, again, a little bit of background on the agency, just to, to uh, I know there's a million type of uh, agencies out there. 
Um, our core focus is on branding and storytelling. That takes the takes the form of things like design, um, video, content marketing, social media, things like that. So it's a, it's a pretty wide uh, scope. And over the years, I've built uh, a team of collaborators, freelancers, and staff to um, support the agency. We worked on a, a few exciting projects. Um, one of the most recent ones and one of the biggest ones during the pandemic was uh, with TELUS, uh, and I'll, I'll speak about that uh, later on. The first thing I'm going to do is show you this uh, little brand video uh, for now creative group that we uh, put together. And the reason I'm going to show this is uh, it was a collaborative video where we had different artists and designers in our network create um, type of, uh, basically typography or um, uh, hand lettering. Uh, and we pieced it all together with a script that I wrote into a video and there was a number of uh, collaborators on the project. So just a quick video to kind of intro you to uh, what now is about before we dive in. Not everyone sees things the way you do. You've got an idea. You see challenges and solutions, better ways of living, working, creating, sharing. Everyone has the same 24 hours in a day. So start small, grow big, rise and grind. The world doesn't wait. The world can't wait. Ideas and execution matter. Do what you love, love what you do. Start something, anything, solving, building, developing. And while you're at it, make a difference. Sometimes it's not research, legalities, or formalities. Sometimes it's all about taking action when others won't and seizing the opportunity. Because now is the time. We are creators, collaborators, doers, designers, strategists, storytellers, entrepreneurs. We are now. There's no better time than now. Awesome. So that was just a little bit of the kind of inspiration and, and vibe behind the um, behind the agency. And again, part of that was to make it uh, collaborative, and 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 we had some great collaborators on it. So thank you so much for the feedback there in the chat. I, I appreciate that. Oftentimes, when you're working in an agency environment, you are very much limited or restricted by um, requirements for certain client projects and things like that. So it's really great as a agency or as a personal brand to kind of launch um, your own video, right? Where you can, your own content, where you can really um, shine and, and allow your message to come through. So we'll start off with a couple of quick basics here uh, about what is a brand. And obviously, um, you know, there's the company side and there's a, and there's a personal side. I'm gonna flip back and forth between them, but primarily, uh, personal branding tonight. So your brand is your promise. Everyone has a personal brand regardless of if you actively think you do. And basically it's the first way to find out about what your personal brand is, is how do your friends and acquaintances describe you and your work? That's kind of very quick, uh, easy way to do it. And, and if there's a recurring theme between multiple people that you ask, um, that is definitely the current per version of the personal brand that you may have. And the personal brand is really branding your public self. Of course, when we're with our family or our close friends, for example, we're going to have slightly different versions of uh, how we present ourselves, but your personal brand should really kind of be uh, an, an accumulation of, of all of those different things uh, and maybe more a little bit on the marketable or professional side. Um, but it is really important to start off by getting clear on yourself first. So when, when we hear the word brand, we oftentimes think, oftentimes think of a logo um, or a corporate brand. And obviously I wanted to show you right now that it's a lot more than that. So because my background is in graphic design and, and I've done a ton of branding projects, um, I want to show that brands are a lot more than meets the eye uh, at first. So, of course, on the top of this iceberg, uh, you can ha you have the visuals, 
you have the key messaging, you know, something like a social media bio or the about section of a website. But underneath that, there's your team or your partners and your collaborators, how you work with them. There's the environment um, and the, the actual, uh, how that environment, how people operate and thrive in the environment. Then there's your core values when you go even deeper. Um, what do you believe in? And how, do you, how are you gonna live those out? And then there's your vision, which is the very big picture stuff. Um, how does your why align with the need and, and what's your vision in the end? Why are you doing what you're doing? What goal you're ultimately trying to get to? So this is just the little bit of the iceberg model, just to show you um, at least that there's a lot more that goes into this. And again, a brand here, a name, term, design, symbol, or other feature that distinguishes an organization or product uh, from its rivals in the eyes of the customer. And we're gonna use the word customer sometimes, but we're talking about audience, user, fan, it can kind of be interchangeable here, right? Brands are used in business, marketing, advertising, obviously, and personal brands as well. So personal brands for creatives, I pulled out a quote from an article here, um, which I love, I think it's super relevant. So, you know, people may, you may say as a creator that your personal brand is your work and it's, it's what you put out there. Um, but if you read this, just as a corporate brand tells its customers what to expect, a personal brand is your promise to your audience. It's more than your work, it's how you work and why you do it. What should people expect from you when they book you? What's your specialty? So again, looking at this uh, personal brand can actually help you to establish a niche, which is super, super important in a really crowded and competitive space. So what is your brand? There's obviously a ton you can think about here. Um, creating a personal mission and vision and values. Um, that's something I, I highly recommend you do and, and perhaps update it every year or so. Um, what, what are you trying to do and why, right? Really reminding yourself of the why is so important, especially when we face challenges or competition or, or tough situations. Create your values from your passion. Ask yourself what you stand for. We saw a lot of that this year. We saw which artists and creators um, and brands took a stand, right? Uh, is it clear and concise? And how do others see you? Again, go back to that question. Um, you can have all this amazing work behind the scenes, but how does the public see you currently? So I would I would recommend obviously taking a moment, not, not right now, but uh, what do your current profiles and bios say about you? Uh, this is supposed to say, who do they speak to? Not why do they speak to, but who do they actually speak to? So what I mean by that is, did you write a cool Instagram bio for your friends or your colleagues? Did you um, write a bio on your LinkedIn because you were looking to get a specific part-time job somewhere? Those are going to be different. And Asking yourself who these bios are speaking to can really help you to kind of refine them and fix them and make them um, consistent. So a quick thing to do would be to audit your presence. Um, again, I don't know how many people Google themselves, but it's definitely something that you should do from time to time. Um, so what do people find when they actually search you? Uh, are you easy to find on social? Do you have consistent usernames across all your different platforms and, and websites and whatnot? Um, on Google, are there super old outdated profiles that you don't want people to see um, or are irrelevant or perhaps they're some website or blog or YouTube video that you commented on back in the day? Um, those are the kind of, kinds of things to look at because people will find them when, when they're searching. And again, this is not just to erase things that might be questionable or inappropriate. This is to also clean up your presence so that people get a super clear, accurate picture of uh, who you are today and, and what your brand is about. Um, another way to kind of improve or add, if you're not listed anywhere, if you don't have a ton of work out there, who are you affiliated with? So if you can become um, part of, for example, um, myself, I'm a provisional RGD part of the Registered Graphic Design Association. Um, that's awesome. If anyone here is part of an association, it's, it's definitely great. 
Um, if you could be part of one, you'll have a directory listing, you'll come up and you'll be listed professionally. Uh, memberships in things like, you know, other organizations, boards of trades, community groups, things like that. Um, if you can be listed on directories, this all really helps with um, becoming searchable. And again, sometimes um, people, and, and again, someone I know lost a speaking gig because of um, them finding that his content on social and his and his Google his Google search results did not match up with the image he was portraying um, in his PowerPoint and in his talk. And so they didn't want their audience to see that disconnect. So they actually didn't give him the speaking gig. So very important to, to look at. Uh, obviously awards, competitions, things that you participated in, that's all gonna really help build up that credibility. Boring stuff, uh, SEO st sounds boring, but it could definitely lead to some great opportunities. And one thing I'll add is with regards to, for example, my uh, agency, many years later, um, we get people asking about projects that we wrote about um, or events that we co-hosted or were partnered at um, you know, years later. So it, it really does kind of help to build up this presence and not just keep that stuff on Instagram, for example, which is not actually publicly searchable. So this next section here, I'm gonna to talk to you about a, uh, you know, a few situations given the fact that there's a pandemic that's happened even though we're a year into it. I know um, there's the whole fatigue listening to all this stuff, but um, this, this is just a perspective on, on maybe different ways to approach communications during this time. So obviously authenticity, super, super important right now. We've all seen, again, people and brands that have messed up during this time. Um, so what does your brand stand for? Don't just jump on the bandwagon when there's a situation or, or a cause um, if it's not actually uh, authentic and, and part of what you would normally do. Um, acknowledge you don't have all the answers and situations that, that arise. Be more personal, consider being present on camera. Of course, a lot of artists have taken to uh, doing this because they don't have any other, any other way to be visually present with their audience. Um, and now is the time to, to really show your values. Like I said, empathy and transparency are really important. So going back to that, the whole thing about, you know, what do you share? How can you be authentic? You really have to nail down what is your story. So your personal brand should revolve around that. Um, you should leverage your story when you market yourself. And what do I mean by your story? Well, why are you here? How did you get here? What inspired you? What motivated you? Where did you come from? Um, these are things that you may think are kind of mundane or, or ordinary, but People do really want to know, uh, why do they want to know? Because they want to connect with you. They want to be able to say, oh yeah, I follow this person because they're also, they also went to this school. Or I follow them because they also care about this cause that I care about. So your story needs to, to, needs to drive your personal brand. Um, why do you do what you do? Like I said, why should people care, right? Um, audiences and potential clients respond well to passion. So when you're passionate, about something and you're and you're showing that um, it, it does make a difference for sure. So your customers um, are not and again my customers, buyers, fans, audience. Um, they're not the only people in your community, right? And so um, a lot of times with entrepreneurs, um, you want people to to buy your stuff, right? You want people to work with you and hire you. But uh, in this case, you're you're I would, I would frame it more as a community, which many creatives do. Uh, what, is, what does your community include? Customers, your following, your local community, don't forget, for example, Mississauga or, or part of Mississauga that you're in, different charities and organizations that you may support or that are part of your community, um, your partners and your peers. So this is all, this is all part of your community. Um, and there's of course more out there, but I would recommend um, that you consider this when you talk about who can you serve? Who can you connect with? Then we have giving back. Um, I put two examples here. One is Amber Mack. You may have heard of her. She uh, is often on different TV shows talking about tech and things like that. Um, she's a keynote speaker. 
She uh, has been an ambassador for a few different causes. Um, Conquer COVID-19 is one of them. They're selling products to raise money. There's also um, the long-term care center, long-term care home front lines. So her, along with Mohammed uh, Faki on the right, who is from Mississauga, he's the CEO uh, founder of Paramount Fine Foods. His entire feed, the reason I put this screenshot here is because his entire feed over the pandemic has changed, has transformed to being about giving back this entire time during the pandemic. And again, yes, all his restaurants, you know, they're closed for indoor dining. They're, he's not doing any big events and catering anymore. Um, but he's not being silent. He's out there every single day volunteering, donating his time, donating resources. Um, so that's something I wanted to, to show you. You don't have to go that extreme, of course. Um, but this really shows your values and, uh, and you can make a difference. And yes, you're allowed to share that stuff. It's not, it's not boasting and bragging that you're doing good. It actually helps because it encourages other people to be aware of these causes. So donate some time if you can. I'm not saying you have to be you know, physically out there on the front lines, especially if it's not safe to do so for you, uh, or you're at risk, but um, donate your time, your work, your network or your audience. Um, there's been a number of artists that have shared out great resources and content throughout this pandemic, throughout all the different, uh, the election stuff that's been happening, all the crazy stuff that's happened this year. Participate in social justice and community campaigns that align with you, of course. Um, educate yourself on the issues first. Partner and promote local small businesses. This is also super important uh, because just as you know, many artists may not be able to currently perform or have shows and things like that, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of small businesses are suffering as well. So now is a really great opportunity to team up with them. Create valuable and timely content. So again, a lot of people ask what to post. Um, I'm going to go through uh, a, a number of tips there later on. But valuable and timely content. Uh, emphasize your expertise, of course. Play up your skills. But um, you just got to remind people that you're there. Anything you're sharing, offering to help, um, posting non-pandemic related content is, is helpful as well. That's a nice escape. Um, and remember that your audience, actually a lot of them do have more time. They're not used to being home all day, every day. Well, they're used to it maybe after a year, but they're not, um, they're not commuting. They're not spending hours on, in transit or driving, um, some of them. And so um, they have more time to consume your content. Share positive content, uh, but be considerate, right? Again, there's still things that come up uh, every week in the news that are anxiety inducing. Um, people are, are really, you know, there are a lot of issues in the community. People are, are suffering still. Um, there's a lot of fear. Uh, I don't have to tell you, tell you guys all this, um, but you can be a source of positivity. That's, that's my point here. Humor can be appreciative. Just make sure you're being sensitive and, and not offending people that are really going through a hard time. Um, what I love to do or what I love to recommend others do is look at the comments of other people's content, uh, news stories, other um, influencers, look at their content. Uh, look at the comments, sorry. See how people are interpreting it and taking it and engaging. And that makes a big, uh, that can give you some good insight to how these um, very sensitive um, types of content to post. All right, and again, um, this is a really great opportunity to reconnect with your audience and actually find out what they are, um, what type of content would they like to see more of at this time, right? A lot of people I know are, are thrilled to, um, a lot of people are actually stuck. They don't know what to post. And maybe they haven't had new work or new shows in a long time. So this is a great way to, um, yeah, this is a great way to do that, take the time. So again, continuing along with sharing positive content, getting creative. So there's been a few artists. Um, I went to OCAD, as I mentioned earlier. So I wanted to share. Um, they had an online exhibit uh, compiling 2020. So um, you can check out the rest of the work here. I, I put the link. But um, for example, you know, playing on the subject matter, right? Uh, this one, clearly, it's, it's a bag. Uh, fashion made out of disposable masks. Um, maybe not the best use of masks when they were scarce at the beginning of the pandemic, but um, still a cool uh, piece of art. 
Uh, and then we have uh, really fancy masks made out of all different types of, of buttons and just presented super creatively. So again, um, get creative with, with the content if you can. So I think personally that again, creatives and artists are needed more right now. Um, and it is a time where people are looking for more content. A lot of the major production houses um, stopped making content for a long time during the pandemic or were shut down many times. So there's actually delays in releasing new episodes and new content. So people are looking for stuff. Um, this is a quote from an article in Harvard, Harvard Business Review that actually came out months ago, but it's super relevant still. So there's, there's been a lot of shifts in, in consumer behavior. So people are watching TV. People are paying for media sources for credible information. Um, they're looking, this is really important, they're seeking more in the way of escapism and entertainment content. So again, that's a time to shine as a creator. What can you put out there that's going to be, um, that's going to fit that need? Um, and again, people do have more time at home uh, or they found more time to consume content. Track trends and measure results. This is, uh, you know, always... Uh, there's always a chance to experiment and see what's working. Um, I wouldn't recommend sticking with one strategy without actually seeing if it's working for, for too long. Um, you know, being able to quickly pivot is, is super important. Um, take note of your stats, look what other people are doing, see how those things are, are happening. Start to own the methods of communicating with your audience. For example, if you didn't previously have um, a newsletter or something, maybe now is a great time to actually in, in set up something like that. Great brands build their equity in crisis like these. Um, just one of the quotes, again, I'd come across um, months ago. Um, I know we're not talking about, you know, big corporate brands here, but it is really uh, a, a good time to show where you stand. So talking, shifting to some social media stuff here. Um, first, we're going to talk about goals, then we'll go into some, some content ideas. So setting your social media goals. Why, why grow your audience in the first place? Well, I, first thing I want to say is that you're, you're not trying to grow by default, right? It's not, just, um, it's not just beneficial to have, you know, numbers for the sake of numbers. You want people to actually engage in your content. You want people to enjoy it, to comment, to subscribe, to want to uh, potentially hire you, potentially purchase from you, right? So um, it's not just about those numbers, but I will say, um, again, it is a platform for more than self-promotion. It's not, you're not just going to have a portfolio, for example, or talk about your work. Um, and think about how are you engaging with your followers? Um, how are you pushing the whole, your, whatever your industry or whatever your niche is, how are you pushing that area forward, the craft forward, the art forward? So those are things to think about on social media beyond just uh, followers. So for 90% of small business owners, um, the main goal of advertising online is to get customers to call, visit a store, or make a purchase. So obviously there's a direct call to action there. When it comes to you know, creatives and artists, it's a little bit different because you do want to actually have people hang around. You wanna build um, build them, uh, build this relationship with them so that eventually they will purchase from you, hire you, or consume your content. It's a little bit different. Um, and so what this means is as you're not, you don't have to compete with business businesses in this, because again, you're going to have a little bit of a different approach. Other goals, of course, online brand building, awareness and reach lead generation. So just getting people's names and emails, for example, um, getting donations, uh, building your following, and people uh, registering for events that you may host. So it's not just about one of those factors. Now we'll talk about what to actually share. And, and by the way, if anyone has any comments or questions about any of the examples I, I uh, bring up, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, no problem. I'm, I'm happy to pause and, and answer those as, uh, as we go. And then there'll also be a lot of time uh, at the end for some questions too. So what do you share? Show the process, show your progress, and show the issues. Um, whatever issues you're facing, 
the challenges you're going through or issues in the world that you want to address. So super important. People sometimes forget. They think, oh, you know, I'm whatever. I'm every single morning I'm sketching or every single morning I'm researching and, and that's boring. Well, by showing that process, sometimes actually it helps people to build uh, a routine and drive into their uh, their subconscious that this is what you're doing. You're actively working, you're actively working, you're dedicated, you're committed. Um, and, and eventually if they do need to reach out to you, they can see that you've shown them part of your practice, for example. So again, when we look at what to actually share here, so uh, ask again, who, who is your audience and think beyond your family and friends, uh, you know, who, who else is in that audience? What device do they use? Are they constantly on their phone? Are they actually on their desktop? Are they on iPads? Are they streaming on a TV? What are they doing, right? How are they consuming it? How frequently are they online? And how niche can you go? It's, it's, it's really helpful the more niche of an audience you can, uh, you can find. Obviously, um, there's static images, but what else can we post, right? Video content, blog posts, articles, tips, experiences, people wanna hear your thoughts, right? Photography, podcasts, inspirational stuff like lyrics, quote graphics. Um, what, what about a resource? What about some kind of exclusive content or some tips that you can provide or a download? And then live content is, is huge right now. So you've seen a ton of Instagram lives, Facebook lives, Twitch, Clubhouse. Um, it, it's all happening. Like there's, there's a ton of it going on right now. So if your particular medium allows you to be on there. Um, definitely, definitely do it. And if anyone has, you know, experienced Clubhouse so far, um, let me know in the chat. Just put a put a emoji or something in the chat if you've been on Clubhouse, um, because I'd love to know um, who's on there and, and who's actually using it. Awesome. There's uh, there's quite a bit happening. Uh, I know that people need invites, so if you if you need an invite. I have a few, um, feel free to uh, message me after 41. If you, and actually I should probably explain for those of you who don't know, um, Clubhouse is basically an audio only platform where there are different rooms that you can host a room and, and people can join you and discuss. Uh, and, and essentially it's just live conversations happening on different topics. All right. so. What other types of content? So these are some of the specific examples I wanted to mention. So behind the scenes stuff, um, people love sometimes seeing your workspace, your studio. Uh, again, make it interesting, even if it's just a small, tiny uh, corner of your home or, or your room. Uh, what about throwbacks? So people now during COVID, I know I've posted throwbacks uh, at least a couple of times a month because I don't have fresh content from events. Um, but I have a huge library of previous things that I've worked on, and, and I'm sure you do as well. Um, so throwbacks, previous things you've been part of, previous projects, and, you know, tell a bit of a story there. Don't just necessarily throw up an old piece you've already posted, but um, how, can you, how can you explain that and make it relevant today? Uh, doing a build-up and a reveal. So, again, if you're about to launch a new video or a new song, or a new piece of art, um, lead up to it, build up a little bit of hype, right? Show people some coming soon content, some teaser content, or ask them questions um, along the way. That definitely makes it so that when people see that finished piece, they're gonna pay a lot more attention to it and they may even choose to comment or share because they felt connected that entire time. Uh, when it comes to uh, interviews. This is a great way for you to interview people in your network. You can connect with your own audience. You can ask them questions. I've seen some cool examples where different uh, creators will literally invite any old follower to have a cool discussion with them. And um, it's an awesome way to keep your audience engaged. Doesn't matter how big your audience or how small your audience is. Um, you, can, you can do this with any size. Collaboration. So obviously collabs are huge um, with like-minded creators in your space um, and other people outside of your space. So for example, if you're into a certain genre of music, um, do a collab with a, 
poet, do a collab with a visual artist in a certain niche, right? Um, that's a really great way to grow your audience um, on both sides, right? You'll both mutually open your audience up to new people. Um, clips, so of course, if you have uh, videos you've created, if you have an interview, um, just like me doing this exact recording, I can take a clip of this recording and I can post it on my social media later um, as content, right? I don't have to stand here and create a new tip video if I have a specific part of this video that I would like to use. And I encourage you to repurpose old things, if anything you, uh, any live things you performed at or any um, previous vlogs or anything you've created, you can repurpose. And same thing with, if you're featured on someone else's show or if you're interviewed on a friend's podcast or whatever it was, take that content and, and use it as well. Don't just share the link, but you can actually post uh, some of it on, on your own. And then for fun, you may choose to play into trends. A lot of people uh, are not a huge fan of, of, of trends. Um, some people find it annoying, but depending on, on what your industry is or who your audience is, if they're there, if they're, if they're you know, consuming TikTok content or Instagram reels on a constant basis, um, definitely, definitely, it's worthwhile for you to consider creating there. It's worth trying out every platform once. I'm, I'm not saying that you need to be on all platforms by any means. Um, and some people are not comfortable on certain platforms, but feel free to give it a try. These two images here, by the way, um, these are actually from a personal brand as an example. Uh, Lamar Taylor, he is um, co-founder of House, uh, which is uh, an inc kind of creative incubator space for artists in uh, Toronto. Um, more, more famously, um, he is known as being the creative director of uh, The Weeknd, uh, and they've kind of partnered with a couple people and, and made this space. So why am I just telling you this? It's because um, his personal brand showed the journey. These like raw, organic, uh, behind the scenes photos when they just got the space and starting renovations. Then you have another one months later where he's in a planning meeting, right? Like this is not a glamorous, this is not glamorous, but it's really cool to show the process and the journey. People love seeing this. Again, when the space opens, people want to check it out. They, they, they followed along the way. So don't be afraid to show the behind the scenes. All right, virtual showcases. So um, of course, um, nowadays there are different festivals you can join. Definitely one, some that I would look into. Design TO just happened recently. Um, I wanted to show this example because they did a distance and digital version. So there were some in-person um, exhibits. Uh, but they did a, a, a very big online component as well um, of the festival. Uh, if you haven't heard of Design TO, it, it's a whole range of, of content. But um, look out, look up some virtual showcases. Um, something I didn't put into my presentation is called um, Art Archery. Uh, Artery.is is the website. If you haven't heard of this platform, definitely uh, consider checking it out. It's kind of a uh, it started off as an, as an in-person situation for uh, small intimate shows and performances. Um, but, but now there's all kinds of online showcases, online classes. Um, definitely check it out. It, it's, it's all about how, how you can basically reach new audiences, um, starting off small and niche, but um, build those up and, and, and it's a cool community to be part of. Uh, another uh, thing you should do is, at least if you're looking to, to grow your brand and, and grow your um, following, local and niche media. So I just put a couple of uh, random examples here. Um, you know, Mississauga News, Insaga, local news blog that, that covers tons. These are things you can, you can start building up into. Now, you may think, you know, what's the point of being in my local newspaper and only reads a newspaper? All kinds of people challenge this um, idea. But here's the thing. Once you're in there, you're searchable. Your name comes up in a professional matter. Uh, articles like this do rank a lot higher than, let's say, a personal blog or, or social media post. 
And um, it allows you to then send that article to you trying to get into a much bigger news source, right? So again, yes, groups like Mississauga Arts Council that may have their own publication, their own newsletter, things like that are worth getting into. Uh, it is worth the time because again, you can leverage those pieces later. Everything accumulates to your portfolio and to your uh, SEO, your searchability, and uh, adds to your credibility as well and, uh, and allows you to use them as stepping stones to bigger features. So two examples I'm trying to, uh, I wanted to show as well here. Um, the first one on the left is uh, New Theory Radio. Shout out to Nav Nanwa. Um, been doing stuff in, in Peel region for a long time. He, he MCs all kinds of uh, events and stuff. Um, so he started New Theory Radio. It's a podcast. It's also on um, AM Saga 960 AM radio. He, uh, his show is dedicated to, to featuring artists. And it's really cool because it'll cover issues like <clears throat> mental health, uh, isolation, creation, mindfulness. So cool topics. But one of the things I want to show you are his collaborations and sponsorships, which is really great here. So on the left, you'll see that this um, one was sponsored by PAMA, Peel Art Gallery, Museum and Archives, which is actually located in Brampton. They've, they sponsored his show, which is great. And then he also did a collaboration here with the Rose Theater in Brampton with their series called Rose at Home. So this is again, really cool collaborations that exist locally that you may or may not know about. Um, but there are opportunities out there locally if you pursue them. I know a lot of people want to immediately get into like a really big publication. Um, but if you can get into the into these types of things, it's great as well. So I'm going to talk about a few artist examples really quick. Um, so these are these are three examples that are kind of like local GTA uh, artists. Um, Looking at the kind of style of content, they do definitely vary it up, but you can tell that, it, that it's a, it's a um, variation of professionally shot content, uh, promo content, and then just organic stuff they choose to post. Um, what is interesting about all of these ones is, again, very creative. Their, their headshots are super, uh, you can tell they're all like studio shots. They're all like very you know, professional shots. So they, they capture your eye immediately with that. With regards to their bios, so of course they all have links in their bios. Two of them have link trees that I'm sure you're very familiar with, link out to multiple things that they do. Uh, one of them links to their personal website, meaning like it's under their exact brand name, consistent username between um, the username on Instagram and the domain name. So that's one thing to consider as well. Um, and again, with, uh, with regards to the two on the uh, right-hand side of the page here, um, they, sorry, <laughs> the one on the very right, he's actually involved in a number of different things. Um, and what's cool is, you know, it's a good way to promote those projects. Um, uh, he's part of a few different businesses, including Roy Woods, which is a pretty popular uh, place in Toronto. Um, this is a, an awesome way to show that you know you can be involved in different initiatives, different collaborations, make them easy for people to find, put them in your bio, tell people about those collaborations. I know a lot of people uh, try to be really discreet and I don't know mysterious in their <laughs> their Instagram, uh, but but people need to be able to easily find you, right? It's it's super important to um, to ensure that it, that it's you, you don't have to be too exclusive looking, right? Um, and, and again, this is just a funny situation, but he, but he has gas station as the type of business. Um, I mean, that's not going to help or hurt him really. Um, but, uh, but Javier has musician, um, and then public figure is kind of a generic one. And you can choose that by, um, when you create a Facebook page, you can choose the type of Instagram category you're part of. So anyways, these are, these are just a few local examples I wanted to show. Then we have um, some more visual artists. So these are music on the music side. This is on the visual side. Um, so we have uh, very visual, colorful. If you look right away, you can you can see, um, you know, great headshots. Um, one of the one of the things to point out is the consistency in their profiles when it comes to their their colors, right? So 
super important. Uh, I wanted to show creators of different sizes here as well. Um, but yeah, these, these are all really great examples and it's all uh, pretty clear. Um, you know, the first, the first one here, Face Off, he's kind of an illustrator. Um, you know, he's a little bit more obscure in his description, but he does say that his DMs and his merch store are open. So he is promoting something immediately, make it easier for people to buy from you. The link in bio is a link to his Etsy profile, which you know you're immediately going to see a product there, right? And then one of the things, one of the tactics I wanted to mention is being used here by Faceoff. In the, the very first post you see is a winner reveal. So he did um, a contest, super great way to engage people, right? Getting a contest going um, is awesome way to engage your current audience as well as to attract some new audience members as well. So he did a contest, check out, you know, you can check out his profile to see what that's actually like. Um, and yeah, so again, get consistent, decide on what your style and your look and feel will look like and run with that. It doesn't have to be 100% perfectly scripted every single time. And in fact, if you do wanna have more kind of organic style, uh, I'll show you a little bit more about what uh, Adam JK does. All of these are various posts from his uh, social. I didn't, I didn't choose ones that were, in, um, you know, a whole row of consistent graphics here. I'm choosing a few different examples to show you. This artist, um, he's a designer. He's from Toronto. He lives in the States now. Uh, really awesome guy, Adam JK. Um, he publishes different books and journals and products in addition to um, his, his artwork and his commissions that he does. Um, but he's just started as an independent artist posting his journal, uh, a, a book that he would make by hand uh, and photocopy and sell every year. Now he has a few published versions. But if you look at his profile, he's, he's posting uh, shots that you can relate to. So his life, right? He's showing a throwback of one of his first uh, events and shows. Then you have, a shot of his workspace, which I had mentioned as an earlier tip. People love seeing workspaces. Um, then you have his actual product. So he is balancing it by showing a real product photo that's for sale with this hat here. But what's cool about his products is they're super genuine and realistic, right? He's not trying to um, be like elitist and, and disconnected. He's being very genuine, very honest. Um, his hat says he literally doesn't know what he's doing. So very cool products. Um, and if you, uh, if you look at the white uh, piece here, black and white text, he does post a lot about, um, he does relate a lot to his audience. A lot of artists, creators, professional brands, and are, are, they're hesitant to post this kind of stuff, right? So by doing this, people share it because they super relate to this. They just didn't want to say it themselves. And that's, I think, why he's one of the reasons why his socials does so amazingly well is because he is genuine and honest and people relate and they share it, they share it because they agree, right? So that's that. Um, he does do everything in his, uh, he does do all this handwritten stuff, which is cool, but that's just his style. I'm not saying to copy his style by any means, but I'm saying to be consistent. Um, the bottom right post here from Instagram. So he, he does have products, right? He actually, again, he's selling these pins, for example, and he's telling people, He's saying why it's so important and why he's thankful for actually purchasing his products. He's not putting a graphic that says sale or buy this, here's the price. He is literally using it as a reason or as a way to thank his audience. He's thanking customers, he's thanking retailers. He's saying he can't do this without them, right? Um, so that's super, super important. Now he's clear at the bottom to say, you can buy everything he makes from his website but he's doing it in a way that's being very grateful and appreciative, right? So again, just look at different approaches that people take. Don't copy one or the other. Look at the style that may work for you. I just wanted to point out, there's only, I only have a few slides left, so um, you can put any questions you want in the chat to uh, when we'll, we'll get to them right after. All right, so again, reframing your content strategy, depending on who you're trying to deal with, if you have a more professional audience, um, brands are focusing on 
retention instead of acquisition, meaning focus on your current audience. What can you do to make them happy and more engaged, right? It's not just about mass marketing right now. I am gonna skip through a few of these slide examples here. Um, this is this is one really um, uh, specific example I wanted to highlight because um, my agency had the chance to work on this campaign. So TELUS um, did a ton of stuff during the pandemic um, and they launched a, a campaign called Stand With Owners. So it was relevant, it was timely, and more importantly, it wasn't about them and their products, it was about their customers and small business owners across Canada. There was a few things they did. One of them was a uh, giveaway that they started off with. So they literally gave away free business, uh, free $25 gift cards to any small business in Canada that you were to tag. Um, super organic grassroots. It did take them a ton of time to actually go through and process all of them. Um, but I was able to support uh, a Mississauga business and a Brampton business through this campaign. So over four days, there were 20,000 social posts and, and they gave away half a million dollars to small business owners through this. So great way to engage. And I'm, and I'm definitely not uh, telling you to buy gift cards for thousands of people, of course, but just want to show you that, you know, small business brands are engaging in this way. And the other thing to highlight is this meet the owners thing. So again, telling the stories, getting behind the scenes, people want to know those stories. So if you're able to do that, uh, even do a quick video on yourself, share your journey, feel free to interview um, other experts or other uh, peers in the space. Because again, like the ads say, we're all in this together, right? Um, and then we have uh, tips, so expert advice. Um, we had the chance to record a number of interviews with entrepreneurs over Zoom, uh, which is some great content. So it's to show you that even though you're a very large corporate brand, everything doesn't have to be 100% polished. Um, but it's still meaningful. Tim Hortons did a cool thing uh, earlier to recognize the community. Again, not saying you have cups or you can customize your own cups, but um, ways that you can thank frontline workers and essential workers is huge. It continues to be something. So they launched this thing called Hero Cups. They removed the, the big Tim Hortons from the cup. Obviously, you can very much tell that it's the same typography style. Um, which is pretty classy and it, and it says thank you instead of Tim Hortons. And then they had real names of uh, essential workers. So cool thing to, to look at. During the pandemic, I had the opportunity to collaborate with a fellow startup and launch Maskwell. So this is actually a brand to, um, so this, this company called uh, Pure Filters, they're an entrepreneur, they were in the same co-working space as us. They actually, um, create filters like for furnaces and stuff like that, right? That's their entire business. They wanted to do something um, to help. They wanted, we came up with this project of doing a mask and it has insert, uh, insertable filters that help, um, you know, filter out uh, um, allergens and, and virus and things like this. So we created a brand from scratch and we called it Maskwell. I'm showing you this because it's more so an example of how you can launch a particular project or campaign um, fairly quickly uh, if you're collaborating with someone uh, and you stay in your lane. So our focus was on, of course, the branding, the messaging, marketing side, their focus is on the product, the quality assurance, the testing and the distribution of it. Uh, we were able to launch this very quickly. We did a number of uh, giveaways and things like that. Um, one of the ones was, um, uh, black owned Toronto. So we gave them a number of masks to then give out to black owned businesses in the city, um, which was awesome. They made a little video um, to promote it. We of course did content that was relevant, um, things like the TTC. Uh, and we launched with a charitable partnership, which is another really important thing to do. As I mentioned, you don't have to give money, especially if you're not making a lot yourself during this time. But something you can do uh, from day one, which we did was build in a donation with every purchase. So again, great ways to collaborate here. Now, if you're looking for content to share that shows that not your work, right? Where you just wanna share, you're talking about trends, you're talking about current uh, subject matters. Um, there's a couple tools. So this one here called Buzzsumo. 
Um, you can you can actually put in topics or brand names and things like that um, and get a ton of amazing things to uh, post. They'll give you all kinds of content that you can share. So that's one, and, and it will tell you how the posts are doing. For example, it'll say, oh, this article has been shared you know, 600 times um, across different platforms. Another tool, super important, especially if you're busy working or being an artist or being a student as well, outside of your, you know, what you what your um, goal is to be, uh, this is amazing. So Buffer is a platform that I've been using for years to schedule social media content. What I love about it is that, of course, it's, it's easy and all that. And there's, there's Hootsuite, which is another one, which is actually a Canadian uh, company. Um, and there's, there's, there's several of them now, but Buffer is great where you can schedule your social media content in advance. I, I'm not recommending that you only use Buffer. You do need to actually engage on the platforms and be there hundred percent. But what I, what I recommend this for is to have a base level of content. For example, let's say you choose two days a week or three days a week, you're going to have something on Buffer and automatically you'll have a whole queue of stuff for the next few weeks built up and then you don't have to think about that stuff and then when something comes up you go and post it live that day right for example if you get a new speaking gig or there's something in the news that you need to share an issue that you want to promote you go on live and you do that and you engage but um, this is a great way where you can select again i can say i have this post and it's going to go on linkedin twitter Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. And then you, you can kind of customize the captions and hashtags and everything for each one. Um, so yeah, if, if anyone is, is um, looking for a platform such as this, it's great. There's also a, an app for your phone. Um, literally, if you're you know on, on your iPhone or whatnot and you see an article or a piece of work that looks great to share, you can push a button in your browser and add it to your queue. Um, and I, and I agree, just saw, just saw a comment in the chat here. So, um, I do not recommend posting the exact same wording for each, each platform. Normally what I will do if I'm posting a, a, let's say I'm posting an article that I found, uh, and I found a quote from that article, I'll always have at least three things, right? What the quote is, what I want to say about it, my actual original commentary, and then the link or hashtags or any other content that I'm going to be tagging, right? So those are the three sections. And then what I do is I will paste that in, the, in a document or a note and I'll update it per social network, right? So for example, if it's something on um, LinkedIn where you wanna actually have a discussion about it, you can actually add those, those comments or those questions to your post. If it is LinkedIn uh, or Facebook, a link isn't gonna perform well. It's gonna be it's perform lower in the algorithm. And so, you actually want to upload the image for that. Choose an image to upload along with the caption and link. Whereas on Twitter, you may want to share the link. So again, you are going to need to adjust per platform. Um, the convenience here is that again, you can just schedule from one place as opposed to you know logging into many different apps. And I will say, if you have a personal profile, let's say your personal brand and you also have a separate page because it's your artist page or your design page or, or whatever, it's great to have a site like this because you can kind of keep those all together. Um, and, and, I, and I use, I manage uh, many, many accounts um, in here too. So check it out. Um, you can also check your analytics and stats from here too. One of the things I like for clients is I can pull together a report from many platforms in one place uh, through a platform like Buffer. So definitely check it out. All right, so I'm gonna skip through a couple things and I have a few uh, kind of messages to, to drive home at the end here. And then, like I said, I'm, I'm happy to stay around and ask any questions. So be clear with your messaging, as I mentioned, offer value that benefits others. Don't just have a call to action or something that benefits yourself, right? Really think of how you can, um, really think of how you can actually uh, serve others and what they would think. Uh, listen and interact. Sometimes you don't have to post, right? Sometimes it's about commenting and engaging in, in important things or uh, supporting other artists or friends, right? Engagement is more important than followers, again, 
if you have 200 Instagram followers, but your posts have 50 comments, you're doing a lot better than some influencers with 5,000 followers and only a couple comments, right? So it really is about engagement here. Build meaningful relationships that includes partners, uh, partnerships with companies, with brands, with organizations, um, with you know people in the industry, um, you know the media, bloggers, all that kind of thing. Build meaningful relationships as well as relationships with your audience. Nobody likes being sold to. Again, a reminder, you know, over promoting your um, your thing that you want people to buy, it's it's not going to necessarily get uh, more sales, right? People are following you. Um, because they like you or your work, they, they don't want to be sold to all the time. And that ties into give people a reason to stay following you. Again, a lot of times um, people will follow you because they saw, let's say, let's say one of your videos got shared somewhere else and they clicked on it and they liked it, they followed it. If you never post that type of video again, or if you are only now talking about this event you're doing and all your posts are about that event for a month, they're not going to stay following. You have to give people a reason to actually want to stay and follow. Uh, targeting tools are your friends. So again, that's that's we didn't touch too much into this because we didn't talk a lot about things like Facebook ads and Instagram ads. But if you know who your audience is and you kind of owned in your demographic, um, definitely use some of the targeting tools that are available through paid ads. Instagram and Facebook ads are not expensive because you can choose, of course, whatever amount you'd like, um, but they're relatively affordable. And if you wanna test it out, um, you know, there's definitely some guides and stuff you should read first, but like, seriously, if you wanna throw some money in there to test it out and see what you can get, you can be very, very targeted, um, which is great. Know your niche. You cannot be everything to everyone. It's just not gonna happen. You're not gonna be able to maintain or connect with a massively wide ranging audience. Now, of course, when you're super famous and you have you know, uh, many, many hundreds of thousands of followers, you're gonna have people from various niches that have come together on your central page, but uh, know who you're really speaking to because even those artists have a core audience that they, that they serve and they speak to, right? Um, everyone else can still like it, but they, but those ones, those core ones is what they make their decisions on and how they target it. Make it easy for us to support you. Huge thing here. So again, how do I, how do I buy? How do I sign up? How do I, um, what can I do that actually helps you out the most here, right? Um, make it easy for people to support you in your work and your, your business, right? People, um, can do something, but they're not going to go way out of their way to do it unless they're a really close, you know, friend or family, right? So um, make it easier for people to support you, um, to find you, to follow you and things like that. Be searchable. Talked about this a lot. Wow. Okay. No deposit, no return. Again, if you're not going to put anything out there and, and, you know, do some work, put out content, engage in other people's stuff, follow people, share, then they're not going to get anything out of social media, right? So that's just uh, goes the same thing goes for branding, right? And finally, remember that brands evolve and people evolve. So whatever you come up with today is does not have to be your final uh, personal brand. It, it's something that can totally evolve and change, and it and it will evolve and change. Um, look at any major artist, and and you'll you'll notice that as well. Um, but but yeah, don't, don't get like caught up in having to craft the exact perfect thing now and then not acting. So thank you so much for listening to me talk for an hour and a half straight. <laughs> if you have any uh, questions or comments, I am here. Thank you so much, Daniel. Um, it was such a treat. It's very thoughtful, insightful, and very thorough. I cannot stress this enough um, to those that may feel intimidated or scared to start up Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook is there are many tools out there. And there's this particular one that I'm going to type into the chat right now is called Canvas. And this can be downloaded via your mobile app and also on your laptop desktop. 
Um, those who don't have a design background, Canvas is a great tool for you to start that because they have pre-existing layouts. Another thing to keep in mind when you are branding yourself is don't be afraid to test the waters out. And when it does start picking up followers, don't get discouraged if, let's just say, Monday you posted your post on 10 a.m., and then an afternoon post, a late evening post, and you don't gain the same traction, don't feel discouraged, okay? Algorithms, they come and play very differently. So test them out. Um, a good tip about hashtag is be genuine and stay true to yourself. There are particular hashtags that you could use that cater towards a bigger audience for yourself, which you can. But know that if you're genuine and you come across well, people will find you. So don't be afraid. Um, consistency is key. Um, and if you stray off, right? If you feel like you wanna try something different, like Daniel says, document that journey. As artists, as designers and visual art artists, documenting your journey plays a large and valuable role in what you do. And Instagram story is another really, really good tool to use. Um, if anyone have any questions, please feel free to, <laughs> there's a lot of a lot of comments saying, thank you so much, Daniel. I um, so appreciate these series. I'm like, no, you're, you're, it's, you're very welcome. Make sure to follow Daniel Francovilla on LinkedIn. Uh, find him on Instagram. And um, yeah, make sure to email us as well. Very eye-opening sem seminar. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, I was gonna say thanks for uh, for all the feedback, everyone. I, I appreciate that. I'll um I'll paste my I'll paste my LinkedIn in the chat if it's uh, if it's easier for you guys. Mm -hmm. My my Instagram is um one of the things I did want to mention for those of you that are involved in many different things. So my Instagram, you know, obviously it has um a, it's me. It's my personal Instagram. I'll I'll talk about things I like, you know, places I'm going, friends bubble tea matcha whatever right that's what that's part of my personal brand so much so and i was going to say that um you know your personal brand doesn't necessarily mean it has to be super professional it just has to be something that people recognize and identify mm -hmm. i spoke at another conference um called the biz mixer they had different different um topics and because of i guess my social media following um i will show you something please hold Turns out it's not there. Um, they actually made <laughs> they actually made me a sweater um, for the for in time for the talk that said Matcha Man on it. So people can identify with parts of your personal brand that they will that they will then remember and use, right? I'm not saying that it needs to be based on a, a beverage, um, but it could be it could be anything. So those are things that kind of make up your personal brand, uh, and it and it happens over time, right? Um, the more events I've gone to, the more things I volunteered for, volunteering to, you know, um, help at an event, volunteering to be a mentor, to be on a panel, like all of these things over time uh, end up leading up to growing uh, a personal brand. So I just wanted to mention that my Instagram, and then of course in my Instagram, I link to the other things that I'm involved in. And, and as an artist or as a creative, a lot of times it is going to be your personal brand that's your main um, but it's also helpful sometimes to have you know one that focuses strictly on your work um, and, and that's okay too so mm -hmm. just wanted to mention that yeah. there is one more question are there any membership programs you know of or can suggest right so obviously um you know joining something something local like uh, Mississauga Arts Council makes sense if if that's your industry and that those are your people um, for me, um, I'm, I'm a member, like I said, of RGD, which is Registered Graphic Design Association of Ontario. Um, one thing that's cool about memberships like that is if you are uh, a new artist or if you're a student, um, they have really great uh, deals and, and memberships. 
but they also have things like conferences, uh, mentorship sessions that you can get through um, association, associations like that. Um, I don't have any specific other ones um, offhand, uh, but they're definitely, they're definitely out there. Another thing, if, if you went to you know, college, university, there are things like alumni associations that can be helpful um, and networks as well that can connect you with, um, with work that you can be part of as well. Mm -hmm. um, there is um, a creative strategist that I've worked with before. His name is called Philip Van Dusen. I'm going to type that into the chat. He provides amazing um, resources as well, um, which you can get for free. Um, they have, it's, it's very consistent. So I'm just going to plonk that in there right now. Cool. And, and then, yeah. I'm just gonna say it's not someone local, but uh, there's, there's a guy named Chase Jarvis. He started a community called Creative Live Yes. And they have um, tons and tons and tons of classes, not only on you know creativity, art, design, craft making, music, all that stuff, but also on the money side of things, the management side of things, wellness, all that stuff. So um, I've I've seen a bunch of his content. I listen to his podcast. Uh, I'll paste the link to Creative Live if you're interested in checking that out too. I, it, it is it is paid but he has a lot of free content as well. So that's one where, again, it's an example of a community um, if you ask like, perfect. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh yeah, yeah. I was mentioning Gary V, of course. Gary V is awesome. He puts everything out there for free. And funny enough, I did have a page about Gary V's content model in my slide. And I do not know where that went, but I'm gonna see if I can, find it right here, here we go. I actually skipped that slide somehow. I'll, uh, I'll pull it up for you right now. So this was this is the Gary V content model. He put together a, like, it's like a hundred page PDF slide deck for free where he explains how he takes, you know, long form content. Let's say you were part of a concert or a show or you were interviewed, right? Um, take that and then turn it into dozens of pieces of content over the next week or month that you can post. It's a really great model. Um, a lot of people are, are following his model. Um, and this deck, again, just search Gary V content model. Um, you'll be able to see the whole thing. It, it, is, it is intense, but what I like about it is that it's gonna remind you to um, think of everything you do as, a, as, a, as a, something you can use as a piece of content, right? Mm -hmm. Like I said, you're interviewed on one podcast and now you have tons of tons and tons of potential with that caroline has a question she says i find all the things that are possible to do to be overwhelming do you guide people and narrow things down to bite-sized tasks that one could do yes so the first thing that i would recommend you do is kind of the exercise i talked about at the beginning which was kind of expressing you your internal, your, your vision, your values, that kind of stuff, right? Then your messaging can be clear and you can create a personal brand website or a homepage, right? That's awesome, that's helpful. You can take that bio and you can put it anywhere, right? But you don't have to be active on every social platform by any means, especially if um, you, you know your main core function is actually creating the art or performing or writing or researching, right? Um, so what I would what I would recommend is committing to one or two platforms at a time that you know you can grow people, you know you can grow following on, you can commit to them, you're comfortable with the format. Like I said, some people will you know start a TikTok because they they think that they'll they'll um, that's where their audience is, but they can't keep up with it. They can't post creative new creative TikTok ideas every single day because that doesn't come naturally to them or doesn't fit into their schedule. Whereas on Twitter, let's say that the effort they put into TikTok was three hours to get out a couple of posts. With three hours, half an hour a day, every day of the week, well, guess what? You can now engage with dozens of people, right? In, in an actual discussion, in a dialogue. So it's what content you're, you're, helpful, uh, you're most comfortable with. Um, that, that's super helpful. So I would commit to one or two. And then for a frequency standpoint, again, if you're gonna post once a week, on Twitter, the chances of someone seeing it is extremely slim because Twitter, the light, the lifespan of a tweet is like a few minutes, right? Because 
people's tweets are constant, especially if they follow news sources or posting hundreds of tweets per day, right? But if you're going to invest in something like, uh, let's say, uh, a video on YouTube, you actually have to do the work to get that out there, right? It's not just going to happen magically. So it's really about which platforms you can sustain mm -hmm. and consistency, just to, just to throw that last point in there. Um, last question. Is this the kind of help what your business does? Yes. So my, my agency, um, we, I have a team at our creative group and we do social media management. So we do stuff like this, this content model. Um, there's a few different things we do. So one is we actually help people with creating their brand in the first place, especially if it's like a personal brand or a small business brand or an organization. We'll help them with that messaging, the design, the branding, right? Then if you already have that, that's fine. We'll help you on a promotion plan, on a, on a strategy to actually who you should reach, where you should be, how often you should be there, what content to create. And the third, op the third aspect of that is actually executing. So if you have already one and two done, great. You can hire the agency to run your social or run your, your newsletter or do your videos, right? Or if you like to execute because you're super active online and you love social media, we can just do the strategy for you and the plan for you, right? So depending where you're at, there's um, stage one, two, or three where we can where we can support for sure. Um, any last questions? No? Okay. Unfortunately, this is all the time we have left. I know that Daniel myself could go on forever on this topic <laughs> <laughs> there's so much to cover um please 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 make sure to those that um follow daniel via linkedin to check out mrs aga arts council please sign up for a newsletter and make sure you follow daniel back on linkedin and you, everyone you're very welcome uh, thank you everyone tonight who joined us tonight for this webinar Keep an eye on your email inbox because Mrs. Sagar's Council will be sending you copies of this presentation and information resources next week. This is a pre-recorded uh, webinar. This will be uploaded. Back to you, Susan. All right. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Uh, TD Culture Lab is going to continue next week. Um, so on Thursday, March 11th at 7 p.m., uh, we have our Creative Money webinar with Chris Enns from Rags to Reasonable. Um, he's going to be talking about financial strategies for individuals with non-traditional incomes. Um, he's going to touch on what CERB is going to mean for your income tax this year. I'm sure a lot of people have lots of questions about that. Um, and just other, you know, financial planning and sort of breaking down the barriers because, you know, money is something we don't like to talk about and it can be a little scary. Um, so that's next week. Tickets are available through Eventbrite. Um, and you can learn more on our website at mississaugaartscouncil.com. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and enjoy the rest of your evening.